This is recording now, and you can do an overview. I'll get out of your way. I'm getting started. Yeah, so oh, do you want to introduce sure. yourself? Do you want me okay. to introduce you? I'm Samantha Chester. I know you too. I don't know you guys too well. Um, I am an English secondary candidate, so I'll talk a little bit about Evernote. This, I actually just discovered this app this year during this program, mm -hmm. and it has been a lifesaver. It's really helped me get through the program. Um, so I'll, I'll open it up and get started. So really, I started using it because it was a way to, for me to keep track of all my notes in class. And it was just instead of having Word documents upon Word documents, I could keep everything here. So I'll show you. Can I log out of yours? Yep, go ahead. Get myself logged in. So this is what the website looks like. And if you're accessing it from a computer, you just go to right to the top to the web sign in. And you'll create a regular username, like any kind of site. OK. So this is mine. And mine is a little bit different than Ian's. The way I set it up is I set it up into different notebooks. So it's like having a real notebook, but it's all here it's on your a computer. Exactly. <laughs> and look at all the stuff I would have in paper that I don't have to print out. <laughs> so I have one for, I've had them for all of my classes this year. So right now I'm taking measurement and assessment. Um, so I have all my notes right here. I can just take um, definitions from things. And what I like best about it is that I have this app on my computer and on my phone, but I can also log right into this computer. So when I was in my internship and I didn't have my laptop, I could still get homework done or look up notes from any desktop computer or any Mac, anything like that. So that was my favorite part. Um, what else? The nice thing also is it's kind of like if you guys know anything about cloud, it's that kind of idea. You can also have um, documents up. So let me see. Oh, can I not scroll up? This one's formatted a little bit different. On mine, on the app, they have the one that you can um, click, like all of my documents and stuff. Does it not have? Oh, it probably. All right, let me see if I can find one. Um, like here, this, did I have anything? Like maybe for reading an adolescent lit, I could instead of having to plug in a flash drive or save it or email it to myself, I just keep everything here. And there's actually a tab on my apps. This is my docs. So any documents I have saved. I can just click and I could just open this right here if I wanted to. I'm not going to open it for you guys now, but I can access anything that way. So I know it's all in one central location, which is really nice for me. And then the other thing I just discovered newly is um, that I'm really liking is called clipping. You can clip web pages. And it's really fun because this right here is a whole web page that I clipped. So I can look at the whole thing without even going online or going to my internet browser. And I can show you guys here. So this is um, a thing called Skitch that you can use on Evernote. And this guy talks about how he uses it in his classroom. So I could show you guys. <laughs> Another nice thing, like we can go to our website and go to Forms and Handouts. And instead of going to the UNH page and looking up at which form I need, I can have this saved at all times. So anywhere I am, oh, I need to look up for my student teaching uh, the Post observation reflection form. I can click it and it'll open up for me right there, um, which is pretty cool. Am I going too fast? You guys miss me, lose me anywhere? <laughs> um, that makes sense. Well, I'm trying to actually get into it and I can't. So if you go to the app store. There is an Evernote app. Okay. So you'd go to the app store. I go to apps. Yep. It wants me to update some stuff. I don't want to do that, but so it will let me get on, beyond down it. Down on the bottom, all the way on the left, where it says Featured, yeah. click on that. And then up top right, you have a little search bar. Okay. Go there and type in Evernote. Okay. And I believe you can create an Evernote account from the app. I just haven't tried it yet. So you can use Evernote. There is a program that you can download for the Mac mm -hmm. or the PC, so you can have it on all of your computers. You can have it on your phones. You can have it on the iPad. Plus, if you were someday at a place there's nothing, you can just go online. Mm -hmm. And you can log into Evernote and you have all of your stuff there as well. Okay, now they give you a ton of choices. I want Evernote, just the regular you one, want free? That, yeah. Okay. So that's Samantha, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe it if somebody just said, tell me 
what the app is. What the app is. My, from the, a little bit of introduction, yeah. I, I would have gleaned that it is a, a virtual notebook. Exactly. The way they, their little catchphrase is never forget anything. So it's kind of a way for you to keep everything in one central place so that you don't forget things, so that you don't you have all your notes, all your web pages in one organized trapper keeper binder kind of thing um, online. How do you, um, because uh, di different professors, different teachers, some of them lecture, many of us do small group mm -hmm. things, a lot of us do a combination of the same class, um, how do you manage to put in, uh, I guess what's the dominant way in which you put notes in here, you refer to, you've got lots of notes from a single class, um, but I find as a professor, it, uh, many times, it's, even with people with good faith intentions, they've got their laptop, the iPad open, and they're not paying attention a right. lot of the time. Right. Um, so how do I, if I know that a student is, is, is actually legitimately trying to use, and yet still is tempting to go, oh, I see the, web, the website over here, and I need to respond over here to my Google chat. Yeah, I don't think how, there's how an answer for that. that. I mean, I honestly use it, and I think it's excellent. I don't think it's any more or less distracting than if I were writing in a notebook and happen to have my computer there anyways. It's just supplementing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that people don't abuse their computer no, privileges. Sure. Yeah, um, but, and I don't think there's any way to fix that or any way to reason with that. But um, for me, it's just it's just replacing writing things in a notebook and saving my hand a lot of strain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, Let's that say comes with it. you remember that one of your classes talked about um, the jigsaw method. But you couldn't remember which class it was. Right. Is there a way for you to search your documents to find where that's talked mm -hmm. about in your notes? Yeah, um, there's a search bar up here. Ian can probably talk more about tags because I'm not good. I'm not too familiar with tags yet, so I'm sure you'll talk yep. a little bit about that because I'll actually learn something from you. But you can search. So um, I were looking for like a KWL chart, like I was looking at before. So all my KWL stuff from my reading and adolescent lit will come up. So it'll search all of your documents or all of your notes to see what kind of documents you have saved or just a note that you jotted down. Some of my notes are literally just little blurbs. I think I have one that's just like interesting things that I might use in the future <laughs> that I have, that ha have no specific <coughs> spot. So that's a way to find those things. Yeah, so it's, it's better than having a notebook because you don't have to flip through a million things to get where you want. Good question. Do you find that you end up putting more or less or different stuff on here than you would if you were keeping it, um, if you just had a, a you didn't let's forget a, a hard, hard copy of something, but if you had a, just like a folder on your, your computer? Right. I mean, I think, especially with web clipping now, I've been seeing things online just in my daily life. I'll be mm -hmm. surfing through the web and come across things, and I will realize, oh, this is perfect for this class, or it kind of ties into something we were learning in my assessment class or something that we wanted to talk about. And I can literally just, it's a button up top that you download, you click it, and it says, where do you want to save this? You put it into the folder, and it's there. And you can see the whole things. I could show Mimi later in class, say, hey, look what I found. Or I could put it up on the computer if I wanted to for a teacher, show them. Um, so I think it just makes things more linked in together and unified. So, but that, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, is that no different from I'm copying the web address, literally cut and paste in, I can stick in the document in my folder that's called Ian's class? Yeah, you yeah. could. I just, so, I just find this easier to do. Okay. And because it's... If you're not at your work computer and you wanted to access that folder... Yeah, oh, yeah. you wouldn't be able okay. to do that. Um, okay. There this is go. anywhere. Um, I, it can be. Uh, it's actually some, I, somebody that? asked me, did, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Is this cloudy? Maybe. Yeah, it's cloudy. Yeah, it's cloudy. <laughs> yeah, um, so it saves everything kind of in, in the Evernote database, and so you can access it from an app on your phone, you can access it from your iPad, you can access it from your own computer, from a PC here, anywhere, which is the nice thing, as I was saying, it's just nice to be able to access all your information in one organized location from all these different devices, because we're constantly switching from different devices. I find myself doing that. So can I ask a stupid question? No stupid um, question. How does it differ from something like Dropbox? Dropbox is simply for documents. Um, documents. So this is more like... I use Dropbox as well. Saving web links. 
This is saving, I was explaining, like if you can see here, I have, right now I have all my courses that I'm taking. So I'm taking like measurement assessment, I have all my ones from past, and I can just open them up and I take just generic notes where I just type what's going on in the class. Um, I can save documents though. So it kind of works as like a word processing as well. You can clip, I was explaining, there's um, clipping websites, so you can access them from any any place. You don't have to email it to yourself. You don't have to save it to a certain document. This is a web page right here that's just saved into my Evernote that you can look at at any time um, without going into an Internet Explorer or something like that. Oh, I see. So if you like a particular web page, this is a way to save it. Yeah. You can pretty much do it. I mean, it's from what I started doing is I used to carry around Moleskine notebooks and just sit in meetings and write down notes, and then I'd go to like a conference and write down notes and stuff. And then I started using this. I started forcing myself to use Evernote. And then now, since I always have my cell phone, if I'm sitting, you know, I was at NCTE talking to uh, somebody about a website, you know, and, and some Twitter stuff. So I went on my phone and just went into Evernote, created a note, and basically said, go see this later. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of emailing myself or whatever, you know, or writing it in my hand or, you know. <laughs> so I put that into my phone in Evernote, and then it was automatically on this, on my computer, on the website, on my phone. So I can just go back and search for it. Um, that's one way. I also have this now. I can go online. I'll, I'll take notes from meetings. You know, I have my computer at our department meetings. I take our agenda and I paste it into a note and then as we're meeting I just basically annotate the, the agenda so I can keep track of you know what is being said but more importantly what I have to do um, you also with Evernote I use it for bookmarks um, back in the day I had under bookmarks like a 7,000 you know bookmarks now as soon as I see something I click the web clipper button and it saves the whole page to the note and then like you mentioned I want to go back and search for, you know, I saw this thing for um, a, a, a jam, an onion jam recipe, and I was like, oh, I want to make that someday, and I'm not, so I basically sent it to Evernote, and then two, three months later, I was like, search onion jam, <laughs> it came right up. Um, that's one, those are three different ways I use it. And a couple thoughts, one, onion jam. But it's a, one word you used, it seems like it might, you said you forced yourself to use this, but it sounds like, and I think my Trapper Keeper analogy is actually a pretty good one now that I think about it. Yeah. It sounds like you're committing to a system yeah. that of, of this is where I'm going to put mm -hmm. all my notes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it, it, it's, it is no more or no less a, a digital device for keeping all the stuff that we collect. Would that be fair to say? Exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, Tina asked before what the difference is between Dropbox and this. With, with Dropbox, it's files. So imagine you have Dropbox, but you have, it's sort of like Google Docs as well. So you have tons and tons of these Word docs or PowerPoint and everything else, and it's in one big trap for people online and everywhere you go. Um, and I, I spent about two years, two and a half years of hearing about Evernote and you know wanting to use it but never using it. Um, and then finally I just basically sit down and say, I'm just gonna start using it. And now as I use it, I use it more and more and more often. Um, and then they keep adding features into it as well. And it makes it pretty nice. What if Mimi doesn't come to class and she wants to borrow your notes? <laughs> I don't, do you know? There has to be something. There's I don't use it for notebooks. sharing, but there's shared notebooks just like your Dropbox. So you can create notes. I have the way I organize mine is I have an inbox, I have archived, and then shared. So I can take individual notes or collections of notes and move them over to shared, share it with specific people, and then when I'm done with you sharing it, I can pull it back out and it's just mine. So you can. Um, you can also collaborate on stuff, but it's not as nice as uh, Google Docs. For that, I would suggest just using Google Docs. What about references? I, I use um, Mendeley for organizing PDFs and references. I'm honestly thinking about moving to this. I'm not going to use Mendeley. I've made a conscious decision not, not to, use to use it. Why not? Because of the copyright 
rules that I break on a daily basis <laughs> that I don't want the world to know about. Should I ever run for president? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you heard it here. You heard it. There you go. It's recorded. <laughs> I'm thinking about switching to this because um, you can dump PDFs into it and it'll make a full page PDF, and then you can search within the PDF. You can search up top and say cognitive apprenticeship, and it'll pull up every single PDF that has it in it. So. I'm but it, does, you don't, it doesn't help you it's create not do your a list of annotated bibliography or hold a collective reference list. No, but what it you does is you can create do, one in it. You can create one in it, and it also, I mean, I've used this for, I use this for qualitative uh, data collection for my dissertation. Because I can go in and take notes. Um, what you can also do is the app will let you um, take pictures. And then if you take pictures, it has um, OCR, so it'll recognize and read characters in it. So you can take photos in here. Like if I hit new note. So you can take photos in Evernote? You can take mm -hmm. photos. So I can go to the camera, and let's say I have, here's your business card. So I can take a picture of Pat's business card. And I can save it. And what it'll do is it'll basically read the text in that card and save it. And then later on, if I say, oh, where's Pat's you know, email, you know, search for you, it'll bring this note back up because it'll read the text in there. The other thing it has that's nice is it has audio recording. So you can basically, yeah. while I'm taking my notes in the department meeting, I can click the mic and I can record the audio of the meeting. So if you're in class, Are you, you can doing just, that? Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can record we audio. We need to shut this down. <laughs> so you can record audio. You can pretty much do anything. Like when I was back in stats, I would sit there and record class on the audio, and then my notes were basically with the audio recording all together. So you can sleep at night. Is that the I don't. I don't <laughs> sleep. That's I the don't. problem. Protected our, all these cloud systems. That's always, you know, and also too, if you did, like with, if you do your a name search, it's scary what you find about yourself online. And with LinkedIn, it'll it'll give you some preliminary information what you put on LinkedIn. Is this similar? If would you come up if you had an Evernote account? I don't know if you know. So. I mean, you're talking about two different things. One is <laughs> how safe is a lot of this stuff when you're online. Safe is a, is a relative term right now. You know, I mean, it's with all the LinkedIn and last FM yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's if somebody wants to get in, that was basically like a Russian hacker that wanted to show what he could do. So he went in and unloaded everybody's passwords. Um, your stuff is as safe as it possibly can be. With Evernote, I don't think anybody is out looking for your information. Um, when I Google myself, granted, I have a lot more online than most people should, um, but a lot of it, none of my stuff on Evernote comes up to the top. All right, um, that's what I wanted to know. Because it exists somewhat under the radar, um, yeah. almost the same way if you have a file in Google Docs, nobody's really out there searching for it unless you make it public and then Google indexes it. So I mean, it's relatively safe. Yeah, people yeah. can't find anything, like people with whom you are professionally collaborating who really need <laughs> I can agree with that. Everybody is, else from the CIA to the FBI can find it no problem. I, when I try to share, because I wanted to use Evernote, uh, I use this in buildings. I have kids, um, eight uh, middle school students, using Evernote as a substitute for Google Docs on iPads because it works better on the iPad than uh, Google Docs does. So I've had little kids using it. It's, it's hard to share things. So, so Sam, as, as somebody who's going to be a teacher, and this isn't, doesn't pertain directly to Evernote, but this is a, a very, it's, I can see this being used. So say everybody has an iPad. Yeah. Uh, so, or everybody has their laptop. So we're all, as, as, as this could happen. As a school, I'm the principal, I said we're all going to use Evernote. Um, I, I don't, you, you said something about, well, it's inevitable that people are going to multitask. I don't agree. As a teacher, there's, there's got to be a way, but how sure. would you, in a class, figure out. I promise you, this is not a final exam. I just want to hear. I want to hear because none of us are good at it. I think. 
Yeah. I'm in, in a meetings with people who aren't students, but even my colleagues. Some of them I've seen them pull out the this and do this. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. And they're caught. And they're on the phone. They're on. Um, yeah, they're racist. So there. how do you think you could you as a teacher can alleviate using these really cool technologies for legitimate instruction and yet not have them doing all the other things that are distracting? I mean, I think I got out of having class with you is just that you have to make whatever you're using the technology for purposeful and engaging. It has to be something that isn't just, note taking is, I feel like at the graduate level it should should be something that you can you can be responsible for focusing on. But as a, I want to, I want to teach high, the high school level and I don't know if I would want students to be taking notes, but if I were to have them on the computer I would want them to be constantly engaged and giving them something that they can accomplish in one sitting and that will be consistently keeping them in involved so that they're not drifting off to different things and looking at different websites and getting distracted. So I think that would be the key. So still the best classroom management is engaging the students. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't change. That sounds pretty good, sir. I mean, I, I, if there were a better one, I'd, I'd counter you. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. And I mean, as a future teacher, I think Evernote for teachers, if you were in a school that provided iPads or everybody was using Evernote on the staff, I think this would be a great resource for keeping <coughs> curriculum and keeping different documents and being able to share ideas and linking websites that you use in your classroom. And since you can share them, which I actually have to figure out now, um, share them with other people, mm -hmm. I think that would be a great resource. It's nice to have Dropbox and Google Docs is nice to collaborate, but if you have some great websites that really pertain to a certain unit, it would be nice to just keep them all in one little file, and then you can send them over to a teacher next door and get them back when, you, when they're done. So I think that's how I would hopefully use that in the future. Yeah, I pretty much use Evernote just for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I use it. I don't really share with other people. I just, yeah, I haven't it's done my that. notes. You know, if I have, I've been, if I have like a lot of revisions of, of publications, you know, I have all those old drafts Instead of them floating around collecting dust, I just put them all into Evernote. You know, or if I have, you know, um, when I blog, I'll basically put, I'll do the edits, the rough edits here in Evernote, and then take that and paste it over to someplace else. Um, I don't really do. I use this for bookmarking. This, this is my notebook for me. How much space do you get? It's pretty much a lot. Unlimited. I have a a lot I, of stuff I think on here. Dropbox, you'll be get so much for yeah. free, and then you have to recruit others to um, get more, or you can pay for. Service. I pay two bucks a month or five bucks a month, but you don't have to. I pay because I think I get a little more functionality. I forget what I get for it, but they set a, a bandwidth. How much is it per month? This is the free version. You get sixty megs. Sixty megs monthly of upload. And that's what I have, and I haven't had. So I mean, you could be doing, you could be taking four or five notes a day, uploading you, photos. You take more notes than we do. Probably. <laughs> you won't hit. Uh, I mean, do you hit any caps or anything? Nothing's notified me or anything like that. So. Four hundred workbooks and I guess six hundred ten Samsung books. Yeah. Per month. Per month. Yeah. Wow. Month. Yeah, that would be. I would be. Hard. Yeah, you're not going <laughs> you to. You have to be your vice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, waking up. <laughs> no, I'm brushing my teeth. And then you can send it to Twitter. Sounds like Twitter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I do like the idea that, assuming that you really can do it, I do like the idea of being able to send your notes to somebody. Um, that, Like the question was asked before. If you're taking notes on Evernote, and one of your classmates is absent from class that night, if you can send her your notes, that would be great. Yeah, and, and that is possible now just by sending an email. So it's well, like, yeah, right? I, don't, I don't know. That's what we're, we were talking well, about. Yeah, you could, I mean, if you took it in a this. Word document, you could copy and paste or attach the document. Um, right. For me, this is just... I find this, I, like Ian said, you commit to something and it's just your way of having a centralized, unified thing. And you know that this is where I go. This yeah, is where my like, notes are. I don't use it for everything. I keep, I back up everything on my computer on, um, on Dropbox. So I don't use just this. I don't have every document on here. I usually just keep the ones that are going to be immediately, that I'm going to immediately need. Like things that I need for tonight, I would keep on here. I, I would agree. I think that it's good. Um, this is a great tool if... Uh, for one, we know that we've already had discussions about the use of Word and Office on these things. Mm -hmm. So there are options. This, though, I mean, if you're dealing with 
just text that you ultimately would put someplace else, or just text that doesn't have to get put into a Word doc. Mm -hmm. It could get copy paste into email. This is a good place to save it. The other thing is, if you're working in Evernote on this or any place on your computer and you don't have Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. you can have it sync so that it's always there. So you could be yep. banging out an email to somebody and lose the laptop. network, which may or may not happen in this building. You know, <laughs> and then you're not stuck. But with with Evernote, it's always there. When you get you online, it'll sync. Oh, okay. But you can't. You need to have a network to even send it. It's just that you yeah. Before what will happen you can is, access like, yeah, if you save stuff, it'll save locally, and then when you go online, it'll sync everything to the cloud, to your computers, to every place else. Okay. Um, so, what was the question before? So, but she just said she oh, how do I stuff, save stuff, like immediate need stuff on it. You're saying my life is on here. Those are very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I There's also services. use Dropbox. I like all my. I have tons of movies of kids in cog labs. I have our video from the literature circles. I have Word docs. I have PowerPoints. I save all that stuff. What I'm slowly doing now, though, is like I said earlier, a lot of my Word docs of previous revisions of articles, um, you know, notes that I've taken. If I, you know, a lot of that I'm moving over to Evernote specifically for the reason I want to very quickly be able to search and find text or ideas or other stuff that. Whereas if it's stuck, so it's more searchable than Dropbox. Yeah, or I mean, think about it. If you have, if you wrote a paragraph or two about, you know, uh, Vygotsky in a Word doc and it's saved in your hard drive and you go searching for it, unless it's in the title, it's not going to find it. It'll find it in Google Docs. It'll find it here. I like that. It seems to me as we learn, this is speaking myself, and a lot about the gazillion. Start to figure out that, that they're not all appropriate, they're not all useful, they're not all useful, even if they're all appropriate, they're not all useful to us per mm -hmm. se. Um, so, um, not unlike other technologies that come about, uh, and you've got to wind, weave your way out and figure out what works, but these are really the same that you, you have to figure out what thing works. We're making the commitment uh, up until very recently, I used a paper calendar, and literally one day, well, you know, to let me borrow a, a, an iPhone. So. And then I could make the switch, but uh, until I was ready to do that, and so again, I was committed yeah. to using something differently. Um, that, and I use it for some purposes, but not for others. So right. it's very interesting to see, okay, this is one option, and you, it works very well for you, it seems to, at any rate. It works very well for you. So it's, it's really fascinating to me to see how lots of different things are available. And that's the trick is with something like this, it's not like one of those tools that it says, this is what you use it for. No. I mean, you can pretty much, you can determine your use for the tool. Um, and it's pretty broad. You know, I use it for bookmarking. I have 10 other things that, you know, everybody can determine how they want to use the tool. It, de it depends on how you want to use it and getting yourself into the pattern of view. I can see a real value to this being in a meeting. I mean, we all know I'm a compulsive note <laughs> This would be a different way, and it would help to probably help to, to get me more focused on what is useful information rather than just taking notes on everything. How so. are you finding your keyboard on the iPhone? Well, I use a stylus, and it's, I find that it's much easier. Are you as fast, do you think, with your stylus, letter by letter? No, I'm faster with my fingers, but I think this is a little too small for me to do the type the way I normally would. You guys can purchase. I mean, oh, if I know. You wanted to, I know. the keyboard is yeah. attached. Okay. Yeah. What are you, how are you dealing with this? I don't have an iPad. I wish I did. <laughs> I don't have that problem. It's intended for extensive typing. It's the keyboard yeah. on the screen is enough yeah. Yeah. for emails, yeah. brief yeah. notes. It's like a big iPhone. Yeah. yeah. I cannot yeah. type. I can't, and I've had it for a year now, yeah. Yeah. other than very cryptic emails, and even at that I get disappointed with mm -hmm. it. But I, I, I'm getting better with the stylus, and I'm getting faster. Yeah. I'm wondering, that, that's my obstacle. Uh -huh. I love the portability of the iPhone, but I can't get around my need for this. How about just a, a very small laptop? I mean, I, I 
learning about, I mean, there's 10 people in this room, let's say, and we could all have 10 different places. Mm -hmm. What, Where is it that we, as a university, say we're going to invest our dollars? Mm -hmm. Is it training the techs to understand all of these devices, or is it that we're going to have one platform and it's we use it to the ability that it grants us, and that's it? So if this is the only thing that works, we find, we make a decision for all of you that we say we're going to support, is that a... Is that the right thing? You know, are we limiting ourselves that way? Or? Oh, oh, I so so I'm just trying to understand. So so I can I'm free if I bring my own device. I'm free to bring anything. But mm -hmm. as a university, we've said that we're only going to use Google. So now it's up to me to say, you know, if I want to really, really I choose anything, but if I really want to talk to my colleague, I best do that and use Google. Is that well? What you're Google's saying? a little different because it's free. It's free to us. You know, Google's Google is ad supported, so that's where they make their money. It's right. not, you know, or something. Yeah, yeah, you can use any device. If we're talking about the actual device, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Like who owns the app? The that, like that's a big yeah, discussion a big in our department. Yeah. Is, well, I want an app, um, a personal app, but it's on the university's device. Right. Or I want to buy an app for my class, but I don't think I should have to pay for it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's and, a, it's and that statement, I agree. If you're buying it for the class, you shouldn't have to pay for it. I mean, we're, then we're going back to that teacher doesn't get enough of the budget yeah. thing, and you know. That's, to me, that's not it. But if, it, if you're loading this app, work, solely work-related app on your personal device, mm -hmm. it gets really murky. In terms Absolutely, of, yes. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's my opinion. That's where mm -hmm. I stand. Yeah. Um, is to you buy the device, but we're going we're gonna to pay for those apps. Mm -hmm. But we have to make a selection now. Right now, it's a, it's, there's only a few things that can do this. There's the tablets and there's this iPad thing. We're talking about portability. And so you have to pick. Is it going to be the Android or is it going to be the Apple thing? So, you know, which foot do we, we need to make a decision. That's you, where I'm really coming from. Is whatever it is, make a decision. <laughs> do you see the university? Do you see our university going that way? It's almost, do you see organizations, uh, I know you're not speaking for our university, right. but, but do you see organizations having to do that? There is, it is a 50-50 division. I've been really looking into it a lot because I administered before I got this job. I administered all of the devices for any, any type of mobile device. So we switched to Verizon just so we can you know, get it all on one network. But mm -hmm. um, there's the question. I've been comparing over and over again. Does the, should the person own the device? Mm -hmm. You know, and then, mm -hmm. then they have, because when you talked about, I got this thing, I got that thing, I got 100 bags, I'm dragging all this crap around. <laughs> she you does. Know, she you know, does. Yeah. Yeah. you need an extra arm coming out of you like this to hold all your stuff. Um, that's my question. I think. Personally, I think that work and, and home life are merging. I mean, I know that I work around the clock, not um, for me, but it's more convenient for me to address something at 7 o'clock at night than it is to come at 8 o'clock in the morning and go, oh my God, this is now a different thing, mm -hmm. which could have been resolved. Yeah. So that's the thing I see, but does everybody want that? Can I say that that's right for everyone? I don't know. It's a public policy. It does, yeah. but we don't even have that policy, yeah. so how can you make a decision? That's this, I'm having angst here because I live such a cloister life in the financial regulatory, we would never dream or discuss this. This would never happen. Nothing up in the clouds. Everything's extremely confidential and protected. Right. Double, triple protected. Your keystrokes could be monitored. Mm -hmm. You don't do anything at home unless we allow you. And you're only limited to do certain things. Right. Well, there was a big, um, you know, it's completely opposite. There was a big conspiracy, not conspiracy, but a story about two months ago that if you were going to, I think, China, and you even, oh, yeah. once you get into, like, the airport, if you walk through and you have, like, your laptop or your iPad or whatever, they basically don't even, businesses don't even want you bringing it. It's just walking through the airport or walking through a lobby of hotels, they have scanners that will basically just, you know, I think that the computer could even be off. You yeah. know, they basically have scanners that will just basically scan and just everything that's on there, Ooh. they'll take it all off. So they could just leave your data there, but every document, every everything, they have a copy of it now. Just you walking through a that's public creepy. place. It is creepy. Yeah. So, I mean, but well, that's... That's why I have some reticence. I love the idea of having this flexibility of using a cloud system to interact, because I have multiple devices right. now. But for personal reasons, I would use it, but limited, mm -hmm. because I'm so fearful of something yeah. like that kind of phenomenon happening because there's nothing left sacred anymore in terms of privacy. It's true. Once you put it out there, it is available for the vapor to access in some way. If somebody is that determined, they can get that information. Yeah. On the flip side of that, if it isn't that way, how do we do our work if we're expect 
expecting people to be available in 24-7, yeah. which is the way this society is going. And, and so. especially at UNH, we're so short-staffed mm -hmm. that if you don't do that, I don't know what the answer is. Well, there was also a hearing story about a, a young man who had a very weird disease that we could figure out, and it wasn't until the medical records were just elect uh, digitized and then a bunch of physicians that he had seen his dad was involved in finding it put together instantly. They figured it out yeah. because a piece from this doctor and a piece from this doctor. So I, well, I agree. Yeah. Kids record, I'm thinking about kids' records. Yeah. All of a sudden, all that private information is out there. But on the flip side, could we help? And <coughs> it's cost benefit. <coughs> could yeah. we help if there yeah. now we can share more information? Right. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's. But I, I, I don't know if anybody is ever going to make that decision. Like what the fell swoop is of, and what the results are of some of these decisions. Because how. How do you how do you manage both ways? You want to be you want to participate. You want to be able to um, have those discussions out there and have to deal with, deal with that without the network, yeah. right? And so you got to put the information or lock it down and that's it. You know you're all in your little boxes. And, and I think that a lot of these this, you know these decisions aren't made now and they won't be made now for a while because things are still fluid. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, what we view is like even now Facebook is the big you know dog online. But even, we don't know what it'll be like in five years. You know, five, ten years ago, it wasn't Facebook at all. So we have no idea what direction we're heading. I think the big and the, the important part is that we have these discussions. Mm -hmm. Is that we are made aware? Is that you know when you walk into your classroom with your kids, they you understand what you're having them do. You understand the decisions you're making by having them use a tool like Evernote. They understand what's happening when they yes. use it, and they and that. A lot of what you'll see is that a lot of our students see functionality in tools like this that we don't even see, or that even the creators of Evernote don't see. So it's just, it's the dialogue, and it's having discussion. I agree, and I think also, I mean, so you decide as a teacher or as part of the building that we're going to use this, the critical analysis of that, just like kids get out of high school and then they go to college and they learn, oh, wait a minute, Columbus didn't just discover America and they're all upset because no one told them that? It's because most high school teachers haven't said, Let's take a look at this book, this piece of technology, and see what it does and what it doesn't do, what's missing and not. Well, this is that times a million. So now we're going to look at this one app and see what it does and doesn't do. And so that the possibilities for good in terms of critical analysis is wonderful. So a question that Nancy brought up earlier, and this, and the only reason I want to go back to it very quickly is because it was a hot button issue in our class was the use of something like this to be taking notes and actively using this in class. You know, I mean, we had a lot of dialogue about this, you know, in, in our class, and then, you know, you talked about it a little bit. What do you guys think? Is this what you, a tool that you would use in class to take notes? And, you know, I mean, how would you scaffold it, something like that? Yeah, I mean, I constantly use this in all of my classes this year. Um, I don't think I have an answer, though, to that how to discourage students from getting distracted. And I don't know, I, I remember in our class we did have conversations and um, a lot of people seemed to go with the idea that you're, I, I remember I think that Kayla was saying, she was saying she doodles, so it's like her way of kind of maybe getting off task for a second, but then she'll come right back and it's her way of kind of like, instead of doodling on a notebook, you're quickly checking an email and you're back. So I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I guess that's our mentality as multitaskers, we're all constantly thinking of everything else that we have going on. Um, so I, I, like I said before, I think it's just staying engaged. And if you are on topic, I remember saying to you, I never had a, and when we had a discussion in class about this whole topic, um, throughout college, I was an English major. I never once brought a laptop to an English class because we were always having a discussion. I never needed to, t I took notes on paper there. But in another class, in a computers class, I took it. But it was lecture style. So I wasn't engaged. I wasn't. I was listening and I was taking notes, but I wasn't being asked to be critically thoughtful. I wasn't being asked to participate. I wasn't being asked to be engaged. So I think that as a, as a future teacher, I think that's something I have to keep in mind as well, and you guys too, is just the temptations to get distracted are going to be there, whether it's on a computer or looking out the window or doodling or talking to a friend quietly, texting. It doesn't, I, I don't know if that, I don't mean to say that it's inevitable, but I do think we are distracted if we aren't consistently and constantly being pulled back into the lesson. Um, because in a discussion class, I had no purpose for this. Because unless it was to look at maybe some. That's incredibly powerful statement, Sam. 
<laughs> because what that says is true engagement is not electronic. Mm -hmm. I think this just supports. It supports what you learn. It supports. It's a way for me to keep track and to keep my stuff organized. Because no matter what you do, you're gonna have you're gonna have papers. You're gonna have assignments that you have to keep organized and keep notes. But I think the learning part isn't happening. This is just a way if to stay organized. If someone in a discussion alluded to a movie that you wanted to remember or said something really significant, you know, the, the little gem of the summary of this book is about, how do you remember that? How do you capture it? <laughs> I mean, I. I think the way I use this is to to kind of interact with my environment. If there are things that will spark in a, in a discussion based kind of the atmosphere, if there are things that I know that I might not be able to explain verbally, I want to show you, that's the difference where this would come in handy. But if it's something more of a discussion, if it's something that's that, that meaningful, it's going to stick in your mind, I think. I don't think we have to rely on it. Would you jot it down? Yeah, I think I would jot it. I have even here um, just some notes that aren't documents, but I have little, remember this website or remember this uh, book I jotted down, I actually jotted that down in our reading our lesson lit book, and I went and I picked it up at the library and I read it. Just things to kind of remind you, just like you would in a notebook. But um, I just think they all supplement. They all, it just adds on to our, to our memory. <laughs> See, I'm going to, you know, I, I need to write that down. If that helps. Just process that. That's really interesting. So if my mind is reflecting meaningfully deeply, then it's in person, it's not electronic. That's what you just said. Is that true? <laughs> Repeat it? I don't know if I understand. Well, a lot of it is you're basically taking that thinking and that like, mm -hmm. cognitive response, mm -hmm. and you're focusing on that personal relationship. And then all the other stuff, like, hey, what's that? that movie and stuff like that, we're saying, okay, I'm going to take a note and I'm going to push off the side and not think about it. So a lot of what, I mean, this is the research on like online reading comprehension. It's, it's more, it's less about reading deeply and thoroughly and really thinking about what you're doing. It's more about knowing what to ignore. It's sifting and knowing what to ignore. So she can sit in class and say, you'll be talking and then Pat will say, hey, there's this book you should see, you know, you should take out. Okay, great. Put it in Evernote, off the side, I'm not worrying about it now. I'm going to worry about it later. I'm going to go back to focus on what i got to focus on. But if, if, she, see, if she's tuning into Evernote for the temptation, and she's going to see at the corner of her eye, she's going to see that end, and she's going to drift off. Mm -hmm. This is, a, this is I'm not worried about this because of what we're doing together, but also because I started to read Cherry Turkle um, last night on my Kindle. Um, yeah, another <laughs> device to carry. <laughs> um, alone together, and she, she, she's got quotable quotes about the we don't reflect anymore. We we respond. We don't reflect. Mm -hmm. And I thought, whoa, man, that goes. Amy, what do you think? I, I mean, I discovered my internship. I I just got an iPhone. Are literally at the computer club to the point where um, the teachers thought they were cheating a lot of times and they'd have their phone out. Now, some of those kids obviously were, but a lot of these kids weren't even cheating. They're so addicted to checking their, you know, their phones or sending random messages to their friends that they can't put them down even at the test. You basically have to, I mean, anytime I'm giving a test, I'm going to tell them, you know, bags under your seat because if you don't, Someone's going to grab it, and they may not even, they may not even be intended to cheat, but it's just it's become a habit. Yeah. I actually read an article in the New York Times, of course I didn't save it on Evernote, <laughs> but uh, it was it just kind of pertains to this. It's called, um, we're always talking about our kids overstimulated with all the media. And I was actually arguing that they're understimulated because they're not, did you read that? Because they're not being exposed to noticing things in their immediate environment, so it kind of just ties into this. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But, but you said to, to, uh, to Dan just a second, what you were really powerfully saying, Dan, if, if you're engaged, you're not doing this. Yeah. You're actually 
talking. And right. if that's the essence of learning, right, talking or interacting or whatever, and it's, it's, that's what we as teachers and teachers of teachers are really trying to figure out how, how this all works. I'm not worried. I'm really worried that we're you know, engaging. But at the same time, to problematize this a little, a little bit, at the same time, we had somebody in class, I forget who it was, she was sitting in the back left, and she said, if I'm in class and I'm really paying attention and really involved, I am whatever tool, I'm basically head down in my laptop banging away on the keys. Like that is the number one, that's the sign that I'm really involved and paying attention is I'm putting everything I possibly can down in the computer so I don't forget it. If I'm not paying attention at all, I'm like, staring at you or staring at the window or if I'm looking up it means I'm not invested at all in class. Yeah. So I'm trying to remember what was yeah. I see you never before all these contraptions came out, I went to class, I took notes, but I made a point of listening and absorbing and making my brain remember and not trying to remember everything well now that I'm old I have to write everything down, but meaning in my youth I I didn't have to do that as much. They were just little notes as placeholders. And this is how interesting that things have changed. Well, it's a stylistic thing, too, well, because yeah. I mean, I think of Pat, Pat's modality for listening is kinesthetically long hand writing, mm -hmm. yeah. and it may become kinesthetic, but it's still kinesthetic. Uh -huh. uh, and, and I'm wondering how this, our various learning styles are going to evolve. You're right, yeah. I have a question. Do you use Tegrity? That helps take away that the student has to have some intermediary between the instructor and, and remembering. Right? It's presumably the lecture. And if you don't lecture, then it's not a useful tool. Right. Or you can record aside from your lecture as well, which is what a lot of instructors do. They they take they do the lecture um, away from the classroom mm -hmm. and then they choose to do an activity instead. The activities are during the class. So that's that seems where that would be the engagement to me is that that type of structure instead of, you know, I know that I can write like maybe 20 words a minute, if that. And that, that becomes very difficult. So I see this whole discussion as a difference between knowledge construction and knowledge replication. Mm -hmm. When you say that, you know, when you're really engaged in your English classes and you never took your computer and you didn't take notes because you were talking, it's because you were constructing knowledge, you were a co-constructor. Mm -hmm. and that takes a different type of engagement than does taking notes in your 682 class where really you are being asked to replicate knowledge that is already in existence. We're not asking you to create new knowledge around it at this level in your career. We're asking you simply to understand what is in existence. And so that's where these tools, you have, you have to determine what is the purpose and the goal mm -hmm. as the teacher, and then what tools are going to support that, and sometimes the only tool is our brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Happy girl. <laughs> <laughs> For a little while. <laughs> well, that's part of literacy, see, that's, that's, that's the learner analyzing what's the purpose for what I'm about to involve, and then choosing the right tool. This circle. Next time I teach a class, I'm going to do this. It makes it hard if you want to take notes. Uh, <laughs> or, yeah. or I'll be on your phone. Or be on your phone. Yeah. 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 Oh, there are awesome. fewer secrets in a circle. Oh, what is that? Oh, oh, there is a. Write it down. That's a word secret. <laughs> when, you were, when you were talking about um, wondering if a student is texting or Facebook or whatever when they're on their computer in their classroom. I've seen a trend where the instructor is now in the back of the classroom with a mm -hmm. presenter instead, mm -hmm. so they can see what's going on, yeah. and you really can't hide when somebody's behind you. Of course, you can take that when we tell you the computer lab. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. yep, you're right. Wow. With our undergrads. <laughs> I think so that was the worst thing no, I think that that was the university it. did was build stations that um, trapped teachers back yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, We're it's really horrible. looking into see how we can make the teacher more mobile that's, to me, that's the next trend: is to get rid of that, mm -hmm. so that you're not you're not 
But it's a comfort. It's, it's a comfort zone. I've seen three very, students stand up behind that and give presentations yeah. back there. It's very traditional. It's what's yeah. expected. You know, you have and, that kind of. And it's stuff. important if you're using a document camera or the computer yeah. as as part of your. You know, yes, lesson. certainly. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can have those elements. elements. You can have, there's right. a connection, uh, a cord that plugs in that will project whatever's on you. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. now so if then. we could get that to be wireless, yeah. the more so, yeah. the better, because now you can go wherever you want. Well, You're yeah. still kind of tethered, but yeah, you're yeah. Show. <laughs> That's what we want is the, the yoga studio in the back there. You know, we have, we want it set up so there's projectors, <laughs> and then you can walk around and say, okay, <laughs> You know, all right, I'm using the iPad, I'm directing, you know, our look up there, and then I can say, oh, Pat, that's really interesting. You know, like Apple remote desktop and yeah. say, Pat, and then push a button, and her sure. iPad is up on the TV. Mm -hmm. That's true. I'm waiting, by the way, for the day that one of us says yoga studio outside this building. I know. And somebody says, wait a minute, you have a yoga studio? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a class, and people are like, yeah. well, we, if, we have a room in the back that now it's um, What I was trying to do is I was thinking when it was nothing. I always said, well, there's this big open room. And I said, what's it, the yoga studio? And so I kept calling it, and I was thinking oh, at um, the Microsoft Nerd Center, they have the design studio. Mm -hmm. And so it's just this open, free form area with a lot of technology. So I was like, that would be a great oh, design really studio, awesome. but it's not as fun as the yoga yeah. studio. Yeah. 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 You say, people are like, oh, you know, this is fantastic. So we've been enjoying calling. <laughs> So if you, if at any point anybody wants to know uh, how to install it, Evernote's free, I can show you how to install it. You can install it on, uh, there is an app, a great app for the iPad. Uh, there are apps for Android and the iPhone. Um, there is a PC app and a Mac app, so you can install it on your machine here. You can install it, you know, if you want to, on your machine at home. And basically, it creates that online tracker keeper everywhere you go. And I just, like I said, I, I use it for bookmarking websites. It saves the whole website so I can search for it. You can take photos and put it in there. I'm probably gonna move my research PDFs over to it. Um, there's just tons of things that you can Is do. Is it ever like E-V-E-R? No, yeah, never yes. yes. I, mean, yes. I, I can't see it up there. Yeah, just a Light. tiny bit of instruction from Ian. I actually downloaded it, so <laughs> yeah. I now have yeah. an yeah. app, and I did take some as Sam was uh, presenting, so some of the ways yeah, that Also, I don't know if you know, there's also a new, I don't have an iPad, but there's, what is it called? It's called like Ever, it's something for a study guide. Yeah, they have new things come up. They have one, there's, there's a new product <laughs> called Evernote Hello, which is like an address book. That kind of weird. And it, it weirds me out. It's Basically, creepy. you say, oh, oh hi, nice to meet you. Take your picture. Yeah, I'm going to take your, your information. picture, and then I want you to take my phone and put your like oh, no. your data in about you. Oh, wow. Or you can scan, like, you can or scan, scan a business card. I guess it's a way of having, like, a Rolodex on mm -hmm. your phone, yeah. but it's, it's it remembers, like, where you encounter that person, like, yeah. at all. Oh, wow. GPS. Oh, yeah. that's not that. They have that, that's and then they have... Yeah, that's yeah. scary. But There's the one, what do you do with those the photos? Photos that people give you? Most of the time you forget who they are, and you throw them away six Yeah, later. so this is a way to put a face to a name, I guess. Say to everybody, you mean, hello, how are you? Yeah, no, that's weird. weird. That's, that's weird. That, that is weird. Yeah. But if you took a picture of their business card mm -hmm. and then, you know, it put like where you met them, like where did you meet and what did you talk about? Mm -hmm. I do. I take pictures of business cards and never know. The other thing I do is when you go to conferences and people hand you all, you, I, yeah, I go to a conference. Yeah, I can see that. It's a nice But I want the little mini scanner and I'll go to my hotel room at night after the sessions and just take all those pictures they give you. Scan them all into this, into Evernote, and then throw them out. And then you have the online version plus receipts and stuff. And you can use an iPad, the, the photo yep. capability, rather. You don't need a physical scanner no. anymore. No, you can just take a picture of it and it'll scan it, and this will work. This will recognize it. This is, oh, what I saw. this is what I saw. I don't know what it is because I don't have an iPad, but. Yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've almost made us feel so bad for you that you don't have an iPad. Yeah. I know, you guys should, you should see, buy one. Call me out. We're not going to take up a collection. <laughs> she, thought I, she thought that's why she was doing this. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean on my just, I just kind of discovered something. We were talking about possibly sharing notes. And there is a little button at the top that says share. I pressed it and it, it talks about sharing no notes. 
Shared notebooks allows you to view notes created by other Evernote users. Great way to share with friends, etc. Um, they, you, you link your device to whomever mm -hmm. you want to share with. Well, I didn't get that far, but <laughs> there are prompts. I didn't need to share it, but it's something so I started sharing it. And so, okay. This is fine. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I learned. I learned from Sam. Well, from Red City not to be yeah. yeah, I think it'll tie it up quite well. Did you mark that book? I did. You did it? Oh, no, it's very easy. Okay, you got it. 4.30, we're starting up. Thank you, Sam. Yes, thank you. What's 4.30? Thank you. Thank you for coming. That's on my place. No, no, children's live on the board. I'm so happy. Oh, thank you for staying with us. Oh, okay. I'm so glad that we're going to be here. I also see one note in your part of the way. Yeah, no, it's not that you see not. There is one note, and then there is some other product that they're saying. So you don't think we're going to see it? I think it might be it might be interesting to have Nancy run it and run most of the discussions because then Suzanne will come in and you know bring in bigger points that we can address. I'm not sure what you mean. 